Good morning. Um, I'm going to give you a quick uh, start on how to use the Montana Mini Computer, our new educational uh, simulator for uh, for CPU. And uh, we just released it, and so I wanted to get it out there and hopefully have some people uh, start playing around with it. So uh, this is the website for it, mtmc.cs.montana.edu. Um, this is uh, we built this computer for my class at Montana State on how sort of digital computing works. Um, and uh, the MTMC, just really quickly, it's a 16-bit computer, um, virtual computer. It's byte addressable. It's uh, two byte words, so 16, so two bytes, so uh, two times a uh, byte is eight bits, and two times eight is 16. So you can see it's, uh, the date, these are registers, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, they're 16 bits wide. Um, it's got 4K of memory um, and uh, a total of 16 registers, and then a, it's got a little sort of console or uh, game pad uh, for interacting with the system that you can use uh, for building games and so forth. Um, and uh, it's based on the general architecture is kind of a mashup of uh, the PDP-11 and like MIPS. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a Frankenstein. Uh, the JVM, there's some ideas from the JVM in there. Um, so uh, it's a mashup of sort of a bunch of different ideas in computer science. But it's designed to be visual and uh, make it easy for people to get their head around how low-level computing works. So let's go through the process of uh, starting it. So it's written in, um, excuse me, it's written in Java, so you're uh, going to have to have Java on your system. Um, and then you can download the jar from the website and just click on it. Um, and once you've done that, you can, from the command line, um, you can run uh, java-jar mtmc jar. That'll start the server, um, and then if you go back to uh, your web browser, you can go to localhost 8080, that'll bring up um, the web interface for it. And so let's go over this web interface really quickly. Um, so you've got some controls up here in the upper left-hand corner for setting how fast the computer is going to run and some stepping. We'll look at that in a second. You've got registers here, and registers are sort of, if you don't know what they are, there's a special... Uh, uh, they're special memory slots that are actually on the CPU that are very fast, and this is where the CPU does its uh, computing. And so we've got six uh, uh, temporary or scratch registers, um, some argument registers, a return value register, a return address register, a frame pointer and stack pointer register, and then the program counter. And these are all used for the CPU as it's doing uh, computation. Um, and we'll look at that here in, a, in just a second. Um, we got memory, which is just a big array of bytes, uh, 4K um, of memory down here. Right now it's all zeros, so um, not super interesting. Um, you've got your gamepad here, which is a, you know, you can use to play games and so forth. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, you, uh, you've got a command line uh, here, console, um, that you can use to interact with the system. And then over here on the right-hand side, uh, there is a file explorer. And so there's a, a, a file system associated with it um, <clears throat> with a bunch of different things in here that uh, we can look at uh, in a little bit. So um, one of the first things I want to point out uh, about the MTMC, and uh, you can read the documentation um, here, the quick start guide and assembly language and blah, blah, blah. Um, but one of the things I want to show you is that um, and one of the neat things about the MTMC is that you can interact with the computer directly from the command line. So you can actually issue uh, instructions directly from the command line. So the first one I'm going to um, use is LI, which stands for load immediate. Um, and that means load a value into a register. And so let's pick T0 and let's load a value into T0. Um, so let's load the value 12 into T0. And sure enough, you can see that I put the value 12 into T0, and you can see this is the binary representation for it. So 0, 1s, 0, 2s, 1, 4, and 1, 8, and 8 plus 4 is 12. And sure enough, that's the decimal value 12. Um, and so let's do, uh, let's put the value um, 24 into uh, T1. And uh, so you can see now we've got the value 24 and 12, and then we can add them together. And these are instructions. These are actual instructions uh, in, for the MTMC. So let's do add T0, T1. Um, and that's going to uh, 
take the value in T1 and add it to T0 and then store the result in T0. So I should uh, end up being 36 and sure enough it is. Pretty cool. You can also do things like, uh, let's do a shift left immediate T01. That's gonna shift these bits to the left uh, by one and, uh, and that turns it into 72 because doing a shift like that is the equivalent of multiplication by two. Um, in binary, um, so pretty cool stuff. Um, you can you know mess around with things at a very low level here. Um, let's do something really quick. Let's sort of do hello world, but we're going to do it by hand. Um, to do that, I'm going to use a, a command that's not in not an assembly instruction. It's just a command that's available. I'm actually going to say set ten, and that's saying set memory location ten, and I'm going to pass it the string hello world uh, and backslash n. And um, if we look here, uh, you can see that actually modified the bytes. These were zeros, but now they're bytes that represent that string. And right now this is in what's called dynamic mode, dynamic view for memory, but we can change that to string, uh, a string view. And you can see, sure enough, those bytes uh, have the string hello world. And that starts at, if you mouse over it and wait for a second, it'll show you the memory location. So that's memory location 10. So um, kind of cool. Let's go back to dy dynamic mode. Um, and so now let's do something really quickly, just as sort of our by hand hello world. Let's set um, A0, which is the uh, argument zero or the first argument. Let's set that to 10. So I'm gonna set, or excuse me, I'm gonna load immediate uh, A0, 10. And so that's gonna put the value 10 into A0. Now, what is that? Let's switch back to a string so we can see. What is that? That's actually a pointer. That's a char star. If you ever want to know what a char star in C is, that's that's a char star right there. It's pointing, it's at the address of that string or the first character in that string to be more specific. Um, and so cool, we've got a pointer to it. And even cooler, um, we can actually call out to the operating system, the MTOS, um, to tell it, hey, print the string that's at this memory location to standard out, which is this console. Um, and so we're going to do that with uh, the sys instruction, and we're going to say sys wstr, and that's going to tell the operating system, hey, I want you to write the string whose address or whose uh, pointer to uh, uh, to it is in the first uh, or in the first argument register a zero. I want you to write that to standard out. If we enter, sure enough, uh, the operating system says okay. It looks in memory and it sees that string and it's null terminated um, like standard C strings are and it writes that to standard out. And so that's sort of hello world done by hand directly from the uh, command line um, here in the MTMC. So you can see it sort of a lot of visual hints as to what's going on and all that sort of stuff. Um, pretty cool. Um, and if we open up source, let's look at like what an actual ASM file looks like. So this is the hello world ASM file. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into the details of how uh, the MTMC assembly, uh, like the syntax and all that, but basically we've already seen most of this stuff. Um, the new thing here is there's a data segment and there's a what's called a label pointing to a string hello world. And the assembler is going to sort of go through all this and lay everything out. And then this LIA0 hello world, what that's saying is I want you to load a pointer to this label into A0 and then uh, call uh, the operating system function wstr. So just basically what we did here, but it's done in uh, the, an assembly file. And uh, you can assemble that. And uh, if, we look in, if we look in bin, you can see there's a hello world in there. That actually ran um, LS as a program that runs on the CPU. So you can see it did some stuff there. Um, but uh, what's cool is we can, uh, you can, you can run hello world and it'll print out hello world and you can sort of see how the code ended up in uh, the, uh, uh, in memory. Um, but you can also just load it. So we can say load bin hello world and that'll load it into memory, but it won't run anything. And so you can see right now, let's switch back to dynamic view here. You can see right now the, the program counter is, is zero, which is pointing to this first instruction, which is going to load memory location eight. And if we look, sure enough, that hello world string is here at memory location eight. So that's what it's going to load. It's going to load that a pointer into that uh, into A0 um, to call WSER. And so when we're in this mode, when we load something like this, you can actually just step through things. So we can say step, and you can see there's a, the visual step debugger over here 
as well, which is pretty cool. And so we can, uh, so we've loaded a pointer to uh, hello world. And again, you can mouse over and see that it's pointing to that memory cell into A0. And then we can step again and sure enough, it'll print it out. And what's pretty cool is that you can also back up. <laughs> so you can go all the way back to like the initial state and um, you can keep printing out hello world, hello world, hello world, um, a whole bunch. So kind of cool. Um, so a uh, cool step debugger um, that allows you to see things, uh, you know, like really get down into the muck. Um, and uh, that uh, makes for a, uh, it just makes for a, a good educational environment where you can sort of see what the heck's going on. So let's close that. Um, I'm going to reset the computer. And uh, now let's, just to give you some ideas of what you can do with this, um, we, uh, if you look in source, there, we've got some games like Snake and Life for the two I'm gonna show. So let me show Snake. Snake was crashing, but hopefully it works. I should probably check it. So that's Snake, and if I click up here, I can use my, I'm using the arrow keys on my, I'm not very good at Snake, so, um, boy, you can tell I'm really not very good at Snake. It was my superpower in school. I was just like not good at video games, so made it much easier for me to study. Um, so that's Snake, and you can see like it's doing a bunch of computation. We've got all this program. I'm just gonna let it crash here. Um, but it's doing, you know, it's doing computation, and this is Snake, and so there's some data that it's using, and blah blah blah. So um, that's how uh, you implement Snake. We can go and look at the source code for it, which pretty. Pretty crazy. Um, I don't know. Uh, this was written by Juris and another guy working on the project with me, um, and uh, he did a did a great job with it. Um, so you can check that out if you want to see something more elaborate. Something that I did, um, and that was sort of like my the thing I really wanted to be able to do with the um, the MTMC is the game of life. Um, and so there's a a life program, and uh, if you run that. Um, it's going to run the, uh, by default, it'll run what's called the Gosper Glider Gun, which is a, um, a famous pattern in the game of life that produces sort of an unlimited stream of what are called gliders, these things that move across the screen. Right now, we're going at one megahertz, which isn't super fast. Um, I'm going to use the speed command, and I'm just going to set it to max to max it out. And you can see, like, this is what it looks like when it's maxed out. Um, and uh, so that's the game of life uh, running on the MTMC. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, there's actually a whole bunch of patterns in data that you can run. So um, we can pause this and we can run life uh, data uh, brain cells. Um, and that'll, that'll run a brain. I don't know what that pattern does. Looks like it just ends up dying. So, um, <clears throat> Um, but there's a whole bunch of different patterns, and these are cell files, which you can pause this. This uh, is from the Game of Life wiki. That's a specification for specifying an initial state. Um, and uh, so you can load those in and run them on the MTMC. So a lot of cool stuff. Um, a lot of stuff still coming. Um, this is a 1.0 sort of beta, very early release, but still very useful. Um, I've already used it for um, teaching uh, in some cases, and uh, has everything you need in one place. You don't have to install anything beyond just Java, um, and uh, you don't have to, you know, you can't hurt anything. Like, you've got uh, sort of one of everything that you need to have some fun doing some low-level computing. So hopefully uh, you find it interesting and uh, play around with it and give us some feedback and let us know uh, what you think. Uh, that would be great. So hopefully uh, uh, you find it useful.